Welcome to the Honest Christian Girl Podcast. I'm Chloe Mack. You've probably seen me from social media or circuit writers, and you like something I said for 15 seconds, and you're ready for more. Well, guess what? You are going to get more. This is going to be short episodes of truth bombs in your ears, and I'm just so honored that you guys wanted this from me. Like, literally, I've been so afraid to do a podcast because two years ago, your girl tried to do one with her dad, and I ended up crying, tears. I suck. I could never talk. But now here we are. I'm walking in obedience. I'm learning to talk with God. It's been a very fun adventure. Now, this episode is going to be shorter and really dedicated to laying the stage of what Honest Christian Girl is all about. Don't leave. This is going to be exciting. This is everything you need to hear. You've actually been such a huge part of actually forming what Honest Christian Girl is through DMs, through our Zoom Bible studies. I've really seen this message forming. It's become quite clear that if you are a Christian woman in this generation, that you are called to live counterculturally. And I feel like this assignment is only getting harder and harder as time goes by. The world has been throwing out these attractive pictures of what a woman should be. If you scroll even for five seconds on social media, you're gonna be inundated with what you should look like, what you should buy, what accomplishments you should have, right? We've all seen the 5 a.m. queen that gets up, has her lemon water, her coffee, her smoothie. Why does she drink so many liquids so early in the morning? I don't know. She works works out. She's seemingly very diligent. She's seemingly very disciplined and she's inspiring. She has gotten me on a train to try and improve myself. But the more I think about this woman, she's really lacking one ginormous factor. She's lacking something huge in its purpose. The world's assignment for a woman is to better herself to absolutely no end. She's on a mission to glow up continually. She's on a mission to be the best version of herself, but really for what purpose? We don't know. And is there ever an end to the improvements? I don't see there is. I see the improvements are only getting more intense. People are getting plastic surgery earlier now in life than ever before. And it's not just these surface level things. It's how you should think. It's what kind of life you really should be living. And there's a massive problem with it that you and I have seen and we've connected on is that we were made for so much more. It's an upside down kingdom because when you really start walking out your assignment on this earth, full obedience to Jesus, you are going to better yourself. You are going to get sanctified. You're going to walk through fires. You're going to come out glowing. I don't know about you, but yeah, I've been on this endless journey to glow up several times before because I was kind of that girl that went to school. My mom was really sick, so my hair wasn't always done, okay? I had dorky clothes because my dad only, it was Old Navy and nothing else, okay? I had so much hope to be accepted. So much hope that I would be loved, that boys would like me. And as we get older, it really doesn't change that much. You know what's crazy is there are actually studies coming out right now that are showing the increase of anxiety and depression linked to focusing on yourself. This graph is like Mount Everest, how high the anxiety and depression is rising. And I can attest to that. It has not been a Princess Diaries movie. The more I have focused on myself, the more I see my failures, the more I actually do fail my expectations and I ignore the great purpose God has placed on my life. Now let's talk about that purpose. In the book of Daniel, it's says those that know their God will do great exploits. I love this verse because it doesn't say those that have enough experience, were born extremely hot, will do great exploits for Jesus. It just says those who know their God, meaning literally every man, every woman that is a believer has a great exploit on their life. And maybe you're like me when you hear great exploit, you think stage, microphone, something that seems really important. I feel like the enemy has been at work perverting what great exploits really look like there. It's like a worldly dupe where you're going to have recognition, all these things. And it's absolutely not biblical. When I look back at the women that really shook the world for Jesus, they did not have a stage or a microphone. They did not have a following. In fact, the cost to do what they did was so huge, was daring. Women I'm thinking of is like Corey Ten Boom. She was a watchmaker in the Netherlands with her family. World War II was arising and the Jews were being persecuted. And Corey Ten Boom had that type of heart that saw a need and met it. And so she started bringing Jewish people into her home and hiding them. Ended up saving hundreds of people's lives. And in return was sent to a concentration.
concentration camp with her sister, her father, and brother. Most of them passed away, but Corey made it out of the concentration camp, which by the way, she led Bible studies and worshiped insanity. And when she was released, she made it her mission to travel the world and share her story about forgiveness. I think about women like Gladys Elward. She was a simple maid in the UK in her early 20s, and she had this desire to go to China and be a missionary. She had no money, and the missions organization denied her because they said she was too stupid. But it didn't stop Gladys. She took the few dollars in her pocket and the longest train to China and goes down in history as being one of the greatest women evangelists of all time. I think about Rosa Parks, who didn't have so much going for her, but had this reputation of virtue. So she was chosen to do one of the greatest civil rights acts that have ever been done. I look at scripture and I see women like Esther who had to probably walk in so much loneliness and she had to have the boldness to defy authority figures. I think about Deborah who had this crazy promise on her life that was so impossible and she dedicated herself to it. Like exploits don't have to look like followings. Exploits don't have to look like something humongous. It looks like simple obedience that changes history. Now, I'm starting to preach. I need a podcast. Listen, I'm saying this. God is raising up a generation of women that are dedicated to living counterculturally, and they are dedicated to the mission God has put on their lives. And that mission might look like in your workplace, might look like in your future family, might look like your school, but your simple obedience can change the world. And that's why we're doing this Honest Christian Girl podcast, because I've been meeting you ladies in the stories that I hear in your life blow me away. And I feel like we need to have a place where we can talk about the way the enemy tries to take us out. Talk about those inhibitors like anxiety and depression and self-hatred, whatever they are. And my pledge to you is to be very honest in all of it because the thing I hate more than anything is somebody who doesn't live what they say. We're on a massive journey to changing the world and it's more fun to do it together. Now, like I said, these episodes are not gonna be lengthy. I'm no Joe Rogan. And I actually want your involvement in these things, I have created a phone number where you can call and leave voicemails of your questions, of topics you think I should do. And if you do a good job, you can be featured in these podcasts. The number is 714-400-3362 or DM me on Instagram. And if you want to see this baby grow up, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode where we are going to take a hold of passivity. Bye! Bye.